Gemma de Toro, the mastermind behind Pacific Rim, has struck gold again. I love Gamma del Toro. I even enjoyed Mimic, which he doesn't like. His films are exquisitely constructed, a particular worldview interpreted through multiple cultural idioms. A Spanish fairy tale told through American pulps, giant robots, or English Gothic literature in its 60s adaptations. This is a departure from his first few films, melancholic ghost stories for the most part, interspersing ruminations on life and death with vengeful spirits. Crimson Peak ties these threads together while delivering a sumptuous chiller. The plot is basically Rebecca meets the fall of the House of Usher with some Wuthering Heights thrown in. But what's remarkable is how fresh this feels despite the familiarity of the plot points. The cast, crew and director all commit fully to the gothic feel, helped immeasurably by those luscious sets. The Crimson Peak itself, Allerdale Hall, is a beautiful construction, echoing Corman's Usher House but feeling like its own beast. The rotting wallpaper, moths in its halls and dripping red clay scream Del Toro all the way. Here he's aided by DP Dan Luston, who also shot the Silent Hill adaptation, a similarly visually striking horror. The best thing about his movies, and one of the most striking things about Crimson Peak, is how diverse and robust its colour palette is. The film abounds with warm yellows and greens and of course deep scarlet. A far cry from the desaturated, detached blues and greys currently popular in mainstream horror. And the director's trademark attention to detail is present everywhere in the film, even down to Bern Gorman's character wearing a tie pin shaped like an eye, which is a nod to a Pinkerton past, one would assume. The world is lived in, breathing, real, but also constructed, very specifically constructed towards a certain aim, which is the gothic through and through, filtered through Corman and Mario Bava. It's a big story, packed with details and turns. The two hour runtime flies by, and for the amateur detective, little clues are left here and there with some significant red herrings. Hiddleston in particular is an excellently constructed Byron-esque figure, and Wasikowska, sorry if I said that wrong, I don't know how to pronounce it, there's so many consonants in it. Wasikowska's performance is great because her character is more curious and active than the typical gothic heroine which makes it a nice change of pace, a little bit more modern feeling. Del Toro also never loses sight of the camp of the genre, his characters bellow, no one ever gets blood spilled about something white nearby to dramatically soak it in, and there's a lot of loving nods to the genre, there is for instance definitely something horrible in the attic. But the scares come thick and fast, there's a good few even before the title, and when they come they're wonderfully inventive. Not only that, but the tone is pervasive throughout the film, building up a sense of dread that really pays off very nicely on screen. So there you have it. Marrying disparate parts of his career while pastiching some of his favourite films, Del Toro has created an absolute wonderful example of the gothic genre on film. In case you can't tell, I recommend you watch Crimson Peak as soon as possible. But if you disagreed with me, if you saw it and you thought Tom Hiddleston wasn't that great in it, or if you thought the dresses could have been prettier, because I think you're wrong, but whatever, please comment down below, I'd love to have a chat with you about it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get my next review, which is coming out next week. See you later, guys. Have a good one.